First, let me call upon Sadak Gul, who is professor agrégé at the campus Saint Jean. He is the recipient of a Shirk Insight grant, and he'll be discussing culture and financial markets. I conduct research in a burgeoning um, a field called cultural finance, uh, which examines the impact of culture on, on financial markets. This field originates in uh, the seminal work of Max Weber, uh, a 1905 book uh, entitled The Protestant Ethic and the Spirit of Capitalism. And in, the, in this book, Weber uh, basically argued that one aspect of culture, uh, religion, uh, impacts the economy. More specifically, uh, Weber uh, proposed that Protestantism, as opposed to Catholicism, uh, explained the success of, of capitalism. Protestant values, such as hard work, thrift, striving for social and economic success, were the ingredient uh, of economic growth in the West. But although having long been aware of the importance of culture, uh, researchers treated culture as a black box because only the outer layers of culture, such as symbols, rituals, and heroes, uh, are observable elements, uh, while core values uh, are invisible until they manifest themselves into behaviors uh, and activities. But fortunately, recent research disentangles uh, a complex and multi-layered structure of culture into simple and interpretable dimensions. For instance, Hofstede proposes uh, four national dimensions of culture. These are uncertainty, avoidance, individualism, power distance, and masculinity. The table shows uh, how a few countries, including Canada, score on those dimensions. The scores range from zero to 100. The first dimension, uncertainty, avoidance, captures the extent to which members of a culture feel threatened by uh, uncertainty and ambiguity. Uh, the second dimension, uh, which is uh, uh, self-explanatory individualism. Uh, in an individualist society, uh, ties between individuals are loose. Power distance, the third one, captures the extent to which less powerful members of a society expect power and wealth to be unequally distributed. And finally, masculinity uh, captures the extent to which male assertiveness, uh, like ambition, material success, is a dominant value as opposed to female nurturance. In my previous research, I used those dimensions to link uh, culture to uh, financial uh, outcomes in, in the financial markets. In one paper, for example, I show that collectivist countries have corrupt bank, uh, uh, bank systems. In another paper, I show that US firms located in more religious counties uh, enjoy cheaper equity financing costs and in another paper, I document that national culture influences the choice of debt maturity. For example, uh, firms located in countries that score higher uh, on uncertainty avoidance have lenders extend uh, loans with shorter maturities. So in addition to helping understand the functioning of financial markets, my research has uh, important policy implications. International organizations such, such as the World Bank would be interested to know that corruption in bank lending uh, uh, is driven in part by cultural influences. Therefore, fighting corruption might involve altering uh, cultures in banking organizations. Also, firms entering a uh, financial crisis with short-term debt are more vulnerable to those crises. So the International Monetary Fund and countries uh, interested in promoting financial stability uh, would be interested uh, to know that culture affects debt maturity and in turn vulner vulnerability to financial crisis. So thanks to SHRC funding, in my next project I will be exploring uh, the role of culture, the role that, that culture plays in financial markets. Specifically, I will be uh, examining how culture influences the selection and pricing of the characteristics of debt contracts, namely debt seniority and debt covenants. Thank you.